And these services that you're offering as part of the enterprise service team, is that an ongoing engagement for an EPC company or an end user or both, one or the other or both? And, or is that a, like a two month engagement during the, like while the project is being built, while the asset is being built and then does it end? And then um, is there a monitoring component to like an ongoing, okay, this is what we had predicted. This is what we guaranteed. And then this is what happened in year one, year two, three, four, five, and so on. Um, can you talk a little bit about that too? Yeah, sure. So the uh, when it comes to these engagements, you know, typically it's uh, the way it works is is we'll have somebody reach out to us and say, hey, we'd like to to partner with you on this project. Um, we uh, essentially um, issue a uh, an intake form and then take that back, digest it as a team, uh, memorialize our understanding of the project with the client uh, before we we jump into it. Take a, an initial pass at it and then. Uh, hold a, a design review meeting where we go over initial findings uh, and give the client the ability to make any adjustments um, or any edits that they would like to see. Uh, and then we issue that in our final deliverable. And that usually uh, concludes the, the scope of the uh, enterprise services engagement. Now that said, you know, we are, you know, sometimes- How long does that take from start to finish usually? Five business days on average. Wow, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, obviously, some of it uh, depends on the availability of the client to to make that design review meeting, but sure. it's uh, yeah, five business days uh, is our Got is our, um, Got it. stated turnaround. Uh, uh, and then once the project is up and running, um, is there a uh, post uh, go live day um, component to any services that you provide? Uh, when you say post go live date. Can you, can you yeah, like once the project is up and running, is there a annual uh, annual uh, review or uh, assessment uh, that you connect with the uh, EPC and or the uh, end user on various yeah. aspects? Yeah, great question. So we don't have a like a, a formal annual check in per se, but that's yeah. where our monitoring system comes into play right. because the monitoring system is going to be um, you, you know there to uh, provide any sort of alerts as to you know systems being offline or, or any kind of issue there um, yeah. and then also provide the visibility into uh, again the the health of the investment uh, you know at any given instant uh, where you can jump in and view the you know uh, the, the, the status of the uh, the system and yeah. see how it's been performing um, from on a, from an economic standpoint. It's just a hunch, and I might be totally wrong, but it might be worthwhile to offer a relatively low priced check in uh, meeting uh, service on an annual basis or maybe every six months with the clients, just so they they get to touch base with you guys. And also, um, you know, talk to an expert in terms of like looking at their monitoring system rather than looking at it alone in their own silo, not really, you know, knowing every detail because they do that maybe once or twice a year. But if you if, if they do it with you guys on a Zoom call and you guys comment, it, it can help with their ongoing education as well as... Uh, some recurring revenue for you and staying in touch with them, hearing their feedback for additional product ideas. Just a thought for uh, John and team, John and Adam and team, <laughs> <laughs> you know. No, I, I, absolutely. And and you're right, you know, it, it's, um, you know, different, uh, you have different levels of interest there, you know, uh, post, post installation. And so it's, uh, you know, depending on who you're working with, you know, if, uh, you know, oftentimes CFOs are, are you know, really keen on uh, sure. and diligent in terms of, of um, you know, yeah. tabs sure. in the system versus, you know, um, Makes say, sense. Uh, uh, perhaps a, a house of worship or something like that, you know? Yeah. yeah. Anyway, please continue. I didn't want to uh, cut you off there. Sure. Uh, so again, it, it's just, you know, a very uh, detailed and thorough um, assessment of, of, you know, both technologies, the, the PV system, um, we'll, we'll get to the ESS, ESS system here in a second. Um, 
again, we are, you know, doing this for uh, soup to nuts. So this is, we are also uh, putting together the, the layouts, you know, again, based off of your guidance, you know, we'll ask where the perspective solar locations uh, are, you know, if, if, if any, uh, but then, you know, obviously it's, uh, you know, we're following the uh, international fire code PV installation guidelines. Um, so we are, you know, well aware of the edge roof offsets, the access pathways, the, um, you know, and, and certainly taking into account, you know, as you can see here, the screening around the uh, the rooftop uh, equipment here. So the shading, we're taking that into account. Um, but uh, just to give you a sense of the, the type of quality when it comes to our layouts and the thought that goes into our designs, um, you know, obviously here being mindful of the bio soil, um, and then moving on, the again the ESS system, you know, very detailed, um, you know, down to how many how many times a year the uh, the, the the storage system is cycling, um, breakdowns in terms of, you know, the energy output and demand savings from PV and ESS, and then of course you know the the incentives and the rebates that have been factored into, uh, to the project. No. And again, here, you know, you can see this is, uh, you know, a very straightforward uh, cash flow table where, again, you know, identifying all of the key inputs, you know, your your escal utility escalation rate, discount rate, um, all of these things, you know, it's, it's uh, these are things that, um, you know, our client can provide input on as well. So if you, if yeah. they wanted to see something different, uh, by all means, um, but um yeah, this is the, really the other piece of it, you know, in terms of this template uh, that makes it unique is this appendix section, where again, you know, we are effectively, we are detailing every little bit of this and, you know, um, including notes, not just, you know, it's not just the uh, the key values, but also the notes that went into the design in terms of, you know, was there a uh, any sort of implications from uh, NEMCAP or, you know, the, the rate tariff notes that you can see here. And so, you know, um, if you needed to, it, it's it's it, you know it's to help address you know again full transparency. We don't want this to be uh, you know a black box like uh, you know oftentimes happens. So um, and then in addition to that, lastly, you know we've got the uh, you know glossary of terms. It's always nice to be to know you're speaking the same language, and and a lot of these um, uh, you know can be helpful when you're speaking with a uh, uh, with the end user and, and those clients. So. That is um, that is it in a nutshell. That concludes our uh, demo of the new uh, enterprise services. And thank you, thank you for that, Justin. And thank you for this uh, wealth of information and the depth you provided uh, around uh, the new uh, enterprise services team that has been formally um, that has been formed uh, to extend those uh, VIP services to all ETB clients uh, out there. And uh, I look forward to doing more solar conversations with you in the future, maybe diving into um, more of the economic value, monitoring uh, the energy controls, and maybe how to model uh, demand response and similar types of uh, topics that are all uh, relevant. That sounds you. great these types of solutions. You bet. Thank you, Justin, and uh, talk to you soon. Thanks, Karen.